Brian Brooks. So Brian Brooks comes out, and if you don't know, he is the uh, acting head of the OCC, which, you know, they just pretty much control the, the currency. And uh, he says, hey, I'm against all government interference. We should stick to what the government does well, which is regulation. So we don't want to create this. And I'm like, oh, thank God. But it's pretty interesting. Let's take a look. So Brooks says the creation of the U.S. digital dollar is a terrible one because the government is not good at building things. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, they are too bloated. Uh, they are just too big. They're not nimble and they can't really pivot. So why would they start to get into the innovation game? Uh, that's not, I mean, just stay in your lane. You don't, they don't do that. Brooks believes tech companies, which already possess the know-how, to be in a much better position to issue stable digital currencies. He says the U.S. government needs to focus on doing what it does best, which is regulation. That's debatable. But uh, in all honesty, I mean, they're all pretty good at regulation because uh, that's all they do. Anyhow, Brooks uh, makes it clear that the allowing private companies to be the issuers of stable coins does not diminish the effectiveness of the monetary policy since any such token issued is backed by dollars that are in circulation. So he's saying, hey, we can still do it. It's just that we don't want the central banks to do it. Now, if private companies do it, that's fine. We can regulate that. And it's backed by a dollar to a dollar. That's good. And maybe moving forward, maybe there is a basket of currencies and they can have some type of global CBDC. Regardless, I mean, it's a better option than just the central banks doing everything. Although the best option would be none of the of the above. But just like Circle and Coinbase have issued a stable coin and not the Federal Reserve, still that stable coin is issued with the promise that is redeemable for a dollar. All dollars in circulation are issued by the U.S. Federal Reserve. And this was this was this is my, my thinking because I'm like, well, if the central banks do it and they go, OK, here's your app, uh, Jane, and we're going to give you a thousand dollars or whatever it is. And uh, that's it. So, you know, here it is. Off you go. So my question is, well, why do we need commercial banks? Why do we need Wells Fargo? Why do we need JP Morgan? It makes no sense. Why do we need Chase? Because they're worthless at this point. So. He answers this question. He said, when asked about the role of commercial banks, Brooks says he envisioned the financial institutions being being nodes on these blockchains or themselves be issuers of stable coins at some point. And that's interesting because that would only make sense. They could be independent nodes, just like we have nodes for Bitcoin. All these different banks uh, throughout the country are just nodes, and they are part of the whole network of whatever CBDC it is. And what's also interesting is it talks about uh, they could be starting to issue stable coins at some point. So now you're gonna start to look at mergers and acquisitions. Are these banks going to start to partner up or just straight out buy uh, these companies or these networks that issue Tether, USDC? Name your stable coin. I think if that's the case, uh, you're going to see a lot of people make a lot of money. Uh, well, I mean, the companies that actually do that. But uh, it's an interesting prospect and quite honestly, a little bit scary. Then scrolling down, he makes another good point because they, they start to talk about the CBDCs that are being distributed right now by China and the uh, European Union doing a stable coin framework, which means they're going to actually distribute at some point. And he said, hey, the question is, where's the U.S. in all this? Because all they've said is that, you know, we're really worried about anti-money laundering. We're really worried about terrorism. We're really worried about the illicit activities that these CBDCs play. And that's it. That's not getting into the fray. And he's, I mean, what he says right here is totally correct. Brooke explains that other countries are seeing crypto and stable coins in particular as a strategic advantage, and the U.S. has not figured that out yet. I don't know how in the world they cannot figure this out because there are already countries who are using stable coins, who are using Bitcoin to totally bypass sanctions that, the, that America has put on. Look, Russia and China are doing the same thing right now. Do you think they really want to use the US dollar and they don't want to bypass any kind of sanctions? They're like, you know what, we're okay with that. No, of course they want to do it. Of course they want to get out of it. And if the, if the government can't see that, they are ridiculously slow and behind the times. Uh, I could be wrong, but let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.